Hello and welcome to the third part of lecture one today. So we were talking about systems of linear equations and one of the things that we want to do is to be able to solve system of linear equations. And one of the kind of the things that we're going to learn in this course is that there's a nice compact way of storing the information about system of linear equations, namely in, in a matrix. So what is a matrix? Well, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. So rather than trying to kind of explain this in generality, it's a lot easier to explain what I mean by uh, in terms of an example. Let's say I have this system of linear equations. So I have three equations and three unknowns. And you want to think about, well, what, what is the important information here? Well, the important information is what is all the equations equal to. And the import, other important information is what are the coefficients in front of each variable? So the coefficient of x1 in this equation is 1. The coefficient of x1, even though x1 is not in this equation, is really 0, because you can think of this as 0 times x1. So what we can do is we can store all this matrix in what a grid or what's called a matrix. So we have 1, negative 2, 1. So these are all the coefficients. And then I want to separate it out by just putting a dashed line to remind myself that these are not coming from the variables, but what things are equal to. So this is equal to 0. So kind of like the key information here is the coefficients and what it's equal to. Same thing for the next equation. So we have 0, 2, minus 8, and that's equal to 8. And then in the last equation, we have 5, 0, minus 5, and 10. So this rectangular array, this is called a matrix. Right? So this is an example of a matrix. And actually, it's got a specific name. Oops, I'm not sure why I did that. Let me get rid of that part. This thing here is called the augmented matrix of the system of linear equations because this matrix here is kind of a, containing all the vital information we need to know about our system of linear equations. So our goal, and we'll see this in a couple of minutes when we work out an example, is we want to find solution sets to this system and we can get at it by kind of just manipulating the, this matrix right here. So. What I wanted to do, and we're not going to kind of go down into the particulars so much today, but just give you an example. So it gives you kind of a glimpse of where we're going to be heading at over the next couple lectures. So how do we go about solving a system of linear equations? Well, our strategy is to replace one system with an equivalent system. So remember I said that an equivalent system is a set of equations that has the exact same solution set. And what we want to do is make an equivalent system that's actually easier to solve. And to solve, what we're going to do is to do this to do these operations, we're going to manipulate the augmented matrix. So we're going to have three basic operations that we're going to allow. Okay, so our three operations are multiply one equation by a non-zero constant. That's one e operation we're going to allow ourselves to do on our equations. One of the other ones we're allowed to do in our system of equations is interchange any two equations. So we can change the order in which the equations are presented. And the third thing that we can do is we can add a constant times one equation to another equation. Okay, so what this third one is saying is I can take an equation in my system of linear equations, multiply it by a constant, take that new equation and add it to one of the other equations to get a new equation. Okay, so what is happening here is when I do any of these three operations, I am not changing the solution set. Now, it's, the easiest one to see is this here. If I just change the order of the equations, it's pretty clear that I'm not changing the solution set. Uh, number one is also fairly straightforward to see. If I have a, a solution uh, to my system of equations and I multiply one of the equations, so both sides of the equation by the same number, I'm not changing the system, the solution set. Number three takes a little bit of work to see and the details are worked out in the book. But what I wanna point out is that these three operations do not change the solution set. 
So these three operations do not change the solution set. So this kind of ties in with our strategy that we want to make an equivalent system. So what we want to do is you apply the basic operations that do not change our solution set. So we're making an equivalent system. And then we're going to get a system that's easier to solve. And again, it's a little bit easier to understand kind of the uh, what's going on if we work with a specific example. Maybe working at the high level uh, is a little too abstract at the beginning. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to solve this system of linear equations. It's actually the same system of linear equations that I first had on that slide over there. So what we're and I'm going to do some choices, and I'm not going to explain why I picked these choices right now. I'll, we will go into the details in the next class. But the main idea is that a linear equation in one area, one variable is easy to solve. So what we want to do is find a system of linear equations where our equations have fewer variables. So somehow if we can get one equation with one variable, another equation with two variables, and another equation with three variables, that's going to be a little bit easier to solve. Okay. So here's the setup. Here are my three equations, and over here is my augmented matrix. And what I want to do is I want to use the row the basic operations up here to kind of simplify my system of linear equations. So in our strategy, right, is to eliminate variables. So what I want to do is I have two equations with x1. So I want to kind of get rid of one equation with an x1 uh, and then only have one equation with x1 at the end. And one way that I can do this is I can add, take this first equation, multiply it by minus 5, and add it to the last equation. And when I do that, I'm going to kill off the x1 in the second equation. So let me just rewrite all of that. All right. So what we're going to do is replace equation 3 with equation 1 times minus 1 plus equation 3. So I have here, I'm not changing equation 1. It stays the same. I'm not changing equation 2. It stays the same, but I am changing the third equation. And the third equation here will end up with 10x2 minus 10x3 equaling to 10. And let me just explain where this came from. Because I took minus 5 times the first equation, and then I added it to the original equation, which was 5x1 uh, minus, oh, I had to do both sides, equals 0. And I had 5x3 equals to uh, 10 here. And so when I do that, right, on this side here, I'm going to end up still with 10. And on this side here, I have minus 5x1 plus 5x1 gives me 0x1. Here I have minus 5 times 2, which gives, gives me a minus 10x2. And then minus 5 times x3 gives me a minus 5x3 minus a 5x3 will give me a negative 10x3. Okay, and again, if you're not following this right, right now, that's fine. We'll explain it in more details later. But what you want to see is what I just did with these equations, you can actually think of it uh, in terms of doing operations on the rows of the matrix. Because you haven't changed the first two rows of the augmented matrix. But the last row here, which is 0, minus 10, uh, 0 10, minus 10, and 10, you can think of this as taking minus 5 times row 1 of the first equation plus the third row of the original matrix, right? So that would give me uh, minus 5, 10, minus 5, 0. That becomes my first row. And then this was the original row, 5, 0, minus 5, and 10. And when I add these two together, I get 0, 10, minus 10, and 10. So that's kind of one way to think about it. What I'm doing over here is I'm just doing row operations on the matrix. OK, so let me, we'll continue on here. So now I have 
these equations, and my goal is to kind of eliminate variables. So none of the x1 doesn't show up in these one in these two equations. So now I want to try to get rid of an x2 in one of these two equations. And I can see that I can get rid of an x2 by taking negative 5 times this row and then adding it to uh, this equation. Because then I would have a minus 10x2 here added to a 10x2. When I add those two together, I get a 0. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is replace the, the new equation 3 with minus 5 times equation 2 plus uh, equation 3. Okay, so over here I would have x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 equals 0. In this uh, equation, I haven't changed it, but I have changed the last one. And this one here, I'll end up with 30x3 equals to negative 30. And this corresponds to taking 1 minus 2, 1, 0, 0, 2, minus 8, 8. And then what I'm doing here is I'm taking row 2 times minus 5 plus row 3. All right, so I'm taking minus 5 of this row. And then minus 5 of this row would give me minus 10, 40, and minus 40. And then I'm adding this row, the 10, minus 10, and the 10. And that would give me 0, 0, 30 minus 30. Okay, so again, we're going to explain these details more fully in lecture two. I just want to kind of give you a hint, uh, kind of a, a brief overview of where we're heading at. Now, what we want to step back now is look that the last equation is something that we can solve. Okay, so now we actually have enough information to solve. So we can, we have that the last equation implies that 30x3 equals minus 30. So this tells me that x3 is minus 1. Then the equation number 2 implies that 2x2 minus 8x3 equals 8. But we already just figured out what x3 is. This tells me that 2x2 minus 8 minus 1 is equal to 8. And when you solve for x2 here, you get x2 is equal to 0. Okay, So we solve for two of the variables. And now we're going to solve for the third. So equation 1 now implies that we have x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 equals 0. So that means that x1 plus 2 times 0 plus minus 1 is equal to 0. So that tells me that x1 has to be equal to 1. And so now we have our solution, or a solution. So one solution is the tuple. And this would be a 3 tuple, because it's got three elements, 1, 0, minus 1. OK, and what the nice thing about linear algebra is you can always check your answer, right? Because what we need to do is just go back. Oh, I can't, I don't know if I can squeeze it on here. You take our original answer, 1, 0, negative 1, and you plug it in over here just to make sure that you do get the correct answer over on both sides. Now, the one thing we haven't checked is, is, is this the only solution? In this particular case, it is the only solution. And we'll explain in the next lecture why it's the only solution. So today, I, I just wanted to give you kind of a, an example of the sort of thing that we're working for. We're, we're going to be looking at system and linear equations. And there's a procedure kind of hiding inside of here that allows you to get at that solution. You could look explicitly with the equation or you could start manipulating the matrices because the important information is all in the in the matrix. So next lecture in lecture two, uh, we'll explain the steps of this procedure. And then the key ideas from today's lecture, and there's a lot of them, 
is what is a linear equation? What is a system of linear equations? And we talked about fundamental questions in linear algebra. Does a system of linear, linear equations have a solution? We talked about the connection between systems of linear equations and matrix notation. And I talked about some of the basic operations that preserve systems of linear equations. So that's it for today or in this particular lecture. I'll see you in lecture two, depending upon whenever you decide to watch it. I, I hope this kind of whets your appetite for linear algebra. And I look forward to walking you through these various uh, pieces of the course as we, uh, over the next couple weeks and months. Have a great day.